So in this demonstration, I'm going to create a uh, very simple tablet app that enables you to authenticate uh, using LDAP. Uh, so <clears throat> we've got our iPad stage ready, and I'm just going to drop in an authentication widget. So I'll just drop that in. And uh, the authentication widget uh, essentially just takes one parameter, and that's uh, URL. So I'm just going to um, grab the URL of our LDAP server and paste it in here. And then I'm going to test to see whether the server's actually got access to the LDAP server. I'm just going to hit test and log in using a test username. It's important that the username that you use is um, one that's going to be logging into the application because uh, this process also goes along and gets attributes which you can also use in the Mobile Nation Builder environment that I'll show you in a second. So let me just log in with a test account. And we can see that that went through okay. So now if we unfold our authentication widget, you can see that various user attributes have popped up. So <clears throat> let's build an application uh, that enables us to log in using a username and password and just tells us whether or not we've authenticated properly to begin with. And then once we've done that, we'll go along and take our details and feed them into something like a data source. So let's put it, start by putting in two text fields. Uh, put our first one in. I'm going to call that one username field. I'll give it a placeholder field off. Username. That's obviously general. And I'm going to put in another one, obviously, for our password. I'm going to call that one password. And I'll give it a place on the text and password as well. Now in this case, we want to mask it over, so we'll change it into a password field. Okay, so let's finish it off by creating a login button. And we're going to wire it up so that when we push down on this button, we go along and we authenticate. Before we do that though, um, we're obviously going to want to show a little bit of information about how the authentication went. So um, just to be transparent to begin with, I'm going to put in a label here. And I'm just going to put a bit of text on that saying uh, status. I'm going to update the name of that to status text. Right, so when we hit our login button, we want to authenticate. So, got our login button, wired down from when we touch down onto the authentication widget. And it's got a response that says authenticate. Now it's just a matter of feeding in values for your username and your password field. So, um, you can see that we've got a username field here. And I'm just going to wire in the text from that field. And likewise, I'm going to do the same with the password text. So. And that's all it takes. Um, <clears throat> so now we're going to want to look at our authentication uh, mechanism and get it to do something either when you successfully log in or you don't. So uh, to begin with, I'm just going to change this status label uh, on either event. So we'll go to our authentication. And if I look at the actions here, there's mechanisms that get triggered either when authentication succeeds or when authentication fails. So when it succeeds, let's just put a message in that says uh, welcome and then the name of the user. So <clears throat> let me just wire through when our authentication succeeds to set our status text. And I'm going to say Welcome. And then I'm just going to wire through um, the user's given name. Easily done. And if it fails, let's just change it to say 
could not log you in. So I could not log you in. Check your details. Right, so let's go along and preview that and see what it does. So we'll enter in a username. And a password. And try logging in. And there you have it. So let's improve on that idea a little bit and upload an image into our repository that shows us what we're doing. There's our spinning and activity indicator there. Get that into our media repository. And I'm going to put that into our app. So there it is. Right, so <clears throat> before your users actually hit login, uh, you won't want them to see that, that indicator. So what I'm going to do is set the opacity of it down to zero. Right, so when they actually hit login, let's also wire it up so that as we've authenticated, we go along and we set that media up such that its opacity becomes 100%. Right up to 100. And then obviously we're going to want it to go away again uh, when we've authenticated or the authentication didn't work. Mm -hmm. So when authentication succeeds, let's go along and set the opacity back down to zero. Likewise, when it fails, we'll do the same thing. And we'll have a look at that. Simulator again. And there you have it. Um, I'll try putting in a fake username and password. And there's our authentication uh, sorted out roughly. So let's go along and wire it up so that we go to a new view uh, once we've authenticated properly. Right, so I'm going to create a new view and I'm going to put the calendar in it. And I'm going to put a navigation bar on as well. Right, so I'm going to drop in a calendar widget. And I'm just going to go back to where I was authenticating. Look at my authentication widget. And if I do actually manage to succeed in authentication, let's go along and load up my calendar view. Excellent. So go to my calendar view and in this calendar I want to show a series of events uh, that correspond um, to my students uh, timetable. So I'm just going to add that as a data source to the application say from an enterprise database and we're of type MySQL and we'll just put in our database details uh, 
these, these are obviously different uh, because I'm using a local version of what we've created at uh, CCGS, but um, I'll just put in the host name as well. And connect through. So you can see that it's gone along and it's retrieved uh, the various tables that are in that database. Uh, now for this app, uh, I just want to see what the lessons are so that I can feed them into the calendar. Um, <clears throat> so you can see that I've got uh, various student IDs and subject names and so forth. And I'm just going to bring that table in. I might make use of the students table as well, so I'll bring that one in too. So I'll just hit next. And our data source was successfully entered in. So I can see that there. Now I'm going to need a way of getting that uh, data into this calendar view. Uh, over here. So uh, you do that using a data accessor, uh, which is a widget on the tool palette here. So I'll just drag that in and I'm going to wire it up so that its data source is the all lessons table. Um, now on this calendar view, obviously I just want to show lessons that are relevant uh, to the student that just logged in. So I can add filters uh, to that data and uh, update them using other UI components in Mobile Nation. So I'll just add a filter on the uh, student ID. I want to make it equal to um, what the username was when I logged into the system. So um, <clears throat> let's go along uh, when, we, when we authenticate and wire up that, that filter. So uh, when we authenticate successfully, um, we'll go along to our data accessor and then the filter that we've just set up and set the value uh, to what we had in our username text field. So, And then we'll also go along and fetch the list of, of lessons um, as we authenticate. So go to my data accessor and I'm just going to say fetch the data. Right, <clears throat> so now with that all set up, I can go back to my calendar over here and rig in the general information about the lesson. So uh, I'm going to wire that up to the data access that we just set up over here, and I'm going to wire up the columns so that they match. So if I look at my, my data here, you can see that I've got things like student ID, the subject name and so forth. Uh, so with the calendar, I've got an event start time column. Um, which we've got a lesson start field, uh, likewise with lesson ending. Uh, for the event's title, I'm just going to set it to the subject name. And for the description, I'm just going to set that to teacher. Uh, now I think I might want to show this in uh, week mode. And when I start it up, I just want to show now on the calendar. I'm just going to leave the other settings as they are. Now also when I log in successfully, I want to show this brand spanking new calendar view. Uh, so I'm just going to go to my authentication widget again and put in one more action so that when authentication succeeds, I load up this calendar. And I want it to slide to the left. Beautiful, all done. So let's have a look at this on the device. We'll hit login and here's our calendar. So I don't believe there's any information until February. And there's our study blocks. Excellent, so let's go along and link these uh, calendar events uh, to a detail view. Uh, so we'll just go back to our calendar and we're going to create a new view. I'm going to call it Detail View. Add a nav bar. Then we put a back button on it. And I'm going to put in a great big label. And what I'm going to show here 
is the various fields that I've gotten from my selected item. So, uh, let's put in uh, maybe the subject name, the teacher, the lesson start, and the lesson end. So, go to our advanced editor. I'm just going to put these fields in here. So. And I might put in the subject in big text. So <clears throat> how do I actually get those values from um, what I've just selected on the calendar into this view? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, so I'm just going to go back to my calendar and you can see that it has an action for when <clears throat> I've touched down. So let me just drag that one onto our new view. Let me just fold this one in. And what we're going to do is set the label text, uh, which you can see here. And so what I'm going to do is go back to my calendar and have a look at my selected item. And I'm going along, going to go along and wire in things like when the lesson starts and when the lesson ends. and who my teacher is and finally I'm going to put my subject name in right at the top and I'm going to make that in large print and lastly what I want to do is uh, now that I've set that text to uh, what I've just selected is go along and load that detail view so I'm just going to drag along from what I've touched down onto my new detail view and load it load and log in. And let's bring this now. And I think I put in the wrong details. And there we are. So I'm just going to go forward a couple of weeks into the next term and select a subject. And there you have it, folks, um, a basic implementation of the calendar app for CCGS.